You know what time it is. It is time to turn your kitchen into a sweet construction site and build yourself a gingerbread house. This took me so long to make, but fear not fellow bakers, I will break it down for you step by step so you can follow along and build this French cottage with a nice little greenhouse around the back. So let's skip to day one. It is day one of making my gingerbread house, and I say day one because this is gonna take multiple days, I just know it. And I am so excited because last year I didn't have time to bake a gingerbread house. Jonathan and I got married in August, so we took our honeymoon in November to Morocco. So I didn't have time to bake or film a gingerbread house, unfortunately. So I've put all of my creative energy for the past year or two into this gingerbread house. And when I was searching on Pinterest for some inspiration this year, I saw so many recreations of my gingerbread greenhouse. And it just makes me so happy to see how everyone puts their own little creative spin on my template. So I can't wait to see what everyone does with this one this year. So if you wanna follow along with my template, I've made it completely free for you guys. All I ask is that you tag me in any photos I made by Malie. And also a really great way to support us is to buy some skincare. And that might seem super random, but it's actually because Jonathan and I started a skincare company called Murmur. It's made in France and it makes a great gift for this holiday season. And let's be honest, who doesn't love skincare? So that's a great way to support our company during this holiday season. And like I said, you can find this free template down below. All right, so I have a batch of my gingerbread right here. You can find the recipe linked in the video right here and down below. It was one of my first ever YouTube videos, so please be gentle to past Emily or roast me, doesn't matter, you know. Gotta start somewhere. So you might be able to hear my oven. It is on 350 degrees. And I have my rolling pin right here set to a fourth of an inch thickness. Now these are great for rolling up cookies because you're sure to get a nice even roll. If you don't have that, just eyeball it. But if not, pick one of these up. It's great. It'll be linked down below. I will have flour all over this jumpsuit by the time I'm done with this. Guaranteed. If you find that your dough cracks a lot on the edges when rolling it out, that means it's too cold. So just let it warm up a little bit. Also, when you put your scrap dough into a ball, flatten it as much as you can before putting it in the fridge. This will make rolling out the dough much easier. All right, I have a nice looking piece of gingerbread right here. So now I have a bench scraper right here. This is a game changer. Now I got a lot of questions on this last time of why I used it. It's not because my knife is dull. It's actually because when you go in, you can line it up and just perfectly press down and you have a perfectly straight cut. So now I can just go in, chop, chop, done. I also have here a putty scraper, which is um, about an inch and a half, and I go in the finer details here. So I do use this knife though for any areas that this is too thick for, and also to trace out my shape. I do this because the template moves easily, so it's just easier to cut along the lines that I marked out. So my dough is getting a little bit too soft, I'm just gonna chuck it onto my baking sheet and throw it in the freezer for a couple of minutes just to firm up. So I have a cutout piece right here. As you can see, it's firm because it's been in the freezer. It'll hold its shape nicely. And on this template, I have three of these kind of doors. There are two on the side and one in the back. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a press, not all the way through. So now when it bakes, it'll have this nice seam down the middle, but it'll all be one piece. Mmm, it smells so good. I love the smell of gingerbread. And now this is ready to go in the oven. These thinner pieces take about five to eight minutes and the bigger, larger um, base pieces of the house took about 16 to 20 minutes. Now, if you're not sure, just look for the edges to start to brown a little bit. As a general ballpark, it's better to bake it a little bit more than a little bit less because a soft cookie will make for a crumbling house. And I know everybody loves crumble cookies, but you don't want that when it comes to a gingerbread house. So goodbye. I finished baking all of my gingerbread. I used about two and a half batches. So now while I still have a little bit of sunlight left, let's get to some decorating. So basically I came up with this hack last time I was making my gingerbread greenhouse because it requires a lot of glass. And I'd used isomol and um, sugar in the past, but it's just such a pain. It's a mess, it's not see-through, it doesn't give you that great effect. But these are technically edible, it's made of gelatin but it's in this beautiful little sheet right here, and it looks like glass. And I left a link down below to where I got these on Amazon. You're also going to need some royal icing right here. I did make a tutorial this year. I will leave it linked right here. Super easy to make, but this is basically the glue that holds everything. So we're just going to cut our little gelatin sheets to size. On the back side of the gingerbread, pipe a thin layer of icing around the border of the windows. Press down lightly, then flip the gingerbread over to dry. This will prevent the gelatin sheets from curling up around the edges. Nice glass windows, woohoo! 
let's just go for it. If you saw my gingerbread greenhouse video, then you would know that I like to manifest my dreams into gingerbread, like my Hartley greenhouse. I still don't have one or even a yard for that matter, but I can still dream, right? So in that same mindset this year, I decided to make a French cottage with architecture similar to the homes you would see in the south of France. I modeled it off of the home of Jonathan's godfather, who was a huge inspiration for starting our skincare company. He was an herbalist in the south of France and lived in this old stone home dating from the 1800s. You can see a short tour of it in the lecture episode of my France series. I've been working on this cobblestone on this piece for about a half hour now, and here's what it's looking like. I'm questioning how much work this is gonna take, but... Yeah, I'm just gonna keep cracking on. But my favorite part of my template this year has to be that it is so customizable. I'll be showing you how I made it into a French cottage, but please feel free to make it into your own dream home. Get creative and decorate it however you want. And I can't wait to see what you guys create. So don't forget to tag me in any photos at Made by Millie and subscribe. It's day two of gingerbread baking and I'm on a mission today because I'm a day late since yesterday was Black Friday and Murmur had a lot of sales and promotions and everything that I had to take care of. I swear, by the time I'm done with YouTube, I'm gonna have such a compilation of New York City noises outside of this door. So I'm gonna quickly try to get all that done and we'll catch you up in a minute. So it's eight o'clock. I think the cobblestones took a little bit longer than I expected and also I cooked dinner with Jonathan. So basically I have a giant piece of cardboard here. My gingerbread was sitting on it. so. It has a little bit of grease stain on it. I'm going to measure out the size of the house. The next 10 minutes went something like this. Oh. Oh. Not proud of it, but I'm a wee bit tired. So the math just wasn't mathing. 18, oh, 18. Half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. Goodness gracious. Eventually I came up with these measurements. 14 by seven and a half, eight and a half by 3.75. I have some stiff royal icing right here. And we're just gonna get to town. I got my friends, olive oil, black beans, and chili magic. We're gonna hope this thing doesn't fall over. Starting with the front of the house, pipe a generous amount of royal icing onto the cardboard and bottom edge of the gingerbread. Place it onto the board and use a bottle to prop it up. Repeat those same steps with the side pieces. Then add icing along the edge and press it to the back side of the front piece. Oh, I didn't even realize you guys were getting the ugly inside view of the house. Also, this one is white, not by choice. Basically, it rained two days ago and my gingerbread got a little bit soft and I went to move it and she kind of broke in the middle a little bit. She didn't fully break, but enough to need some reinforcement. So if that happens, don't worry, you can fix it. Just put a little bit of glue in the seam and smudge it on the back and it's fine, it's on the inside. Do not fret if something falls apart. Now, I will cry if this falls apart, so don't, don't look at me for an example. Okay, here we go. And same as before, add icing and connect. Now, very important step, we're gonna reinforce all the inside walls. If you've gotten to this point, congratulations. You have finished the hardest part of putting the house together. Well, actually, besides the roof, the roof might be a little bit difficult, but that's a tomorrow problem. The greenhouse is the same. Start with the side pieces, add icing, and press it together. I already wanna live here. It's like the perfect little house. All right, it is day three, surprise. So I made this icing last night, but then I realized, yeah, I think it's a little bit too dark, but I can't really tell because of the lighting, so I'll just wait till the morning. And plus I was really tired. So I redid the icing this morning. I made it a little bit lighter and a little bit more green because this is my inspiration. This is Bleu de Lecture. And you might recognize that name from my France vlog series where we visited Lecture to see their ancient dyeing techniques. They create this beautiful blue color using woad, which is a plant. And if you see a lot of the old chateaus and buildings in the south of France will have these beautiful blue doors and I wanted to replicate that. As you can see there's a lighter and a darker shade of blue. So I started off with the darker version but went up with the brown. I thought this was a little bit too dark and a little bit too baby blue in my opinion. So I wanted to go with a lighter more of an icy blue. I thought it matched the Christmassy vibe a little bit better. So I'm gonna put on a little bit of Karen Nate because they're on their little bike tour across the US and they just recently went through Ohio and it looks like they're experiencing some of that horrible Midwest weather. But they, they visited Dayton, where I'm from, in Ohio. And yeah, I kind of thought that was really cool. <laughs> also, Anna and Philip from How to Renovate a Chateau Without Killing Your Partner will have a video up today, so I'm really excited about that. They are a French chateau that um, is going under renovations right now. So if you wanna see more French chateau vibes, I would totally recommend going over to their YouTube channel and checking them out. But I'm gonna stop blah blahing because you didn't come here for me, you came here to see how I made a gingerbread house. So for all these side pieces, 
I'm just gonna set them in. And for this, I'm just using a brown food writer pen. Mark around where I want it to be. You can see it has a little marking around that I'm gonna fill the icing in. And that's what you'll do for all three of the doors like this. To achieve the separate icing sections on these doors, first pipe a square and let that dry for 30 minutes or so. Then you can continue to pipe the icing onto the rest of the door. You can use this technique to make any kind of design you want. All right, fondant decorations time. It is only 4 p.m. right now, but it is pitch black outside. So I've already made a few examples of what the shutters will look like, but I'll just show you how exactly I did it. So this is fondant right here. I got a big tub of it. I will leave a link to where I got it on Amazon down below so it's easier for you guys. But I color matched my icing and my fondant right here so that I can have the same color of doors and shutters. So fondant, if you've never used it, it's basically like uh, edible Play-Doh. You can kind of just mold it into any shape and it will dry solid, so just keep that in mind. To make the shutters, roll your fondant thin and cut it out using the shutter piece in the template. Then cut thin strips of the same width. On each piece, score three lines to give it the appearance of wood slats. Take a small amount of water to wet the back of the strips and place one on the top and bottom of each shutter. One of the things I really didn't like about my gingerbread house last time was the fact that I left um, no flooring on the inside, it was just the cardboard. So I have these tiles over here already cut out. I just cut out a bunch of squares. You can see they're like kind of terracotta colored. I finished all of the tiling on the bottom and my beautiful Christmas tree. And if you look in, wow, this is so cool. Good morning and welcome to day four of gingerbread making. This is my favorite part of the whole gingerbread making process. So the first mission in our house renovation series is to put on the shutters and to add some lights. I cut a hole in the base and fed the end of the wire through the bottom. Arrange them nicely and la la. So now we're gonna add on the shutters. Ah, it looks so good. Anytime you're doing something difficult, just pray to the gingerbread gods that everything works out. All right. There she is. Santa delivered these little fondant presents and his elves helped place them by the tree, but they're a little bit camera shy. So now for the roof, this top line right here will go straight across from here to here. So it'll be the same height as this, which is six and a half inches from the bottom to the top. So if you need to mark, you can, I have a little mark right here so I know exactly where to put it. All right, they are on. The middle should be like right in line with this middle window right here. And they do have a little bit of overhang off the edge. That's so, you know, you can drip some icicles and stuff. I'm just gonna let this dry before putting the other pieces on, just so it doesn't all start to kind of collapse down on itself. So while that's drying, let's do the actual roof. You know the drill, give it a nice schmear and stick her on. Make sure to really reinforce the inside of the first roof piece because you won't be able to for the second. So if you can't remember which side is which, this triangle right here, this small one, will go up here closest to the roof, and this one will go along this edge. Woo! All right, the back roof is all done, and now we just have to put the tiles on the roof, the snow on the ground, and all the little details to make this gingerbread house absolutely perfect. For the roof tiles, I used gum paste because I ran out of fondant. I cut out three quarter inch squares in two different shades of beige and placed them over a Sharpie to dry. Then with a little bit of royal icing, I glued them along the edge of the roof. Only the first row needs to be dry. All the additional roof tiles can be cut and placed right away. Also, does anyone recognize this music? Let me give you a hint. It's from a famous ballet performed around this time of year. I meant to add the window grills while the pieces were laying flat, but I forgot. And so as you can see, I'm really struggling to make them straight. And now for all the cute miniature props. I made a little table for my plants and this one is definitely my favorite. I also made a little topiary because that seemed French. This table and chair combo is definitely my favorite part of the greenhouse. And I even made some miniature murmur products to go on top. And of course, a little festive wreath. Now it doesn't snow very often in the South of France, but I didn't really have any other way to cover up the cardboard, so it'll have snow. Also, I'm not sure who leaves their doors open in the middle of winter, but I wanted to show off the tree inside, so my house, my rules. And final touches, I added a shovel and a pitchfork to the side. There 
she is. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I just love her so much. A little French cottage with blue doors and windows and a greenhouse in the back. Like, I just combined my two dreams in one. I'm manifesting it, even though last time I made a gingerbread greenhouse, it is two to three years later and I still don't have it, but it's okay. Manifestations can take a little bit longer than you want. But I can't wait to see how you guys turn this template into your own gingerbread houses. So don't forget to tag me at Made by Mali. If you wanna see my gingerbread greenhouse, click here. And if you wanna see the launch of our skincare company, click right here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bisous.